Oh, pardon. You know, actually, I think I'm in no mood for games right now. How much longer are we to be kept here? Are we just simply watch as Paris burns from afar? The rabble are rioting. This is the price to be paid for spoiling the masses. You don't understand, Gabrielle. The king sent us here long before the city went up in flames. He knew what was about to transpire. I think he is somehow involved in these events. Oh, come now, Marie. True, he can be misguided and somewhat short-tempered at times, but he's no Nero. Then why have we been given no news for so long? Place on for Gabriel. The children. They'll soon be out of harm's way. I am most certain of it. Monsieur Clary will take good care of them. For now, at least, we are safe. Safe? Vraiment? Where are the Chateau Guards? We are still protected. The King just preferred to use a different sort of guard. Guards? Or jailers? They won't even let us leave this room, Gabrielle. The King? He has lost his mind to grief. First our darling, Sophie. Then our beloved son. My poor sweet angel. They didn't let me say goodbye. I wasn't even allowed to see him. C'est vrai. Something inside me is, is crying out. Telling me he's still of this world at, at times. I think I hear him calling to me. I'm so afraid. What do you fear, my queen? Everything. Everything horrifies me. The king's wrath. His army of indefatigable automats that Monsieur de Vaucanson has built for him. The charlatans who advise him, who are now more powerful than ministers. What happened to my son? What will happen to the children that God has deigned to leave in my care? I won't let any harm come to them. This I promise you. <laughs> but how? Do you not see that we're prisoners here? All is not lost. You forget about the one automat that is not hostile to us. This new bodyguard of yours. This machine that is now somehow able to speak and understand what we say to it. C'est terrifiant. Yes, but it is loyal to you. That's all that matters. If it managed to escape the chateau, it could be your eyes and ears in Paris. And if, perchance, the other automats were to go after it? You won't attempt anything foolish. I cannot lose you, Gabrielle. Not now. Aegis? Madame. Uh, the king must be stopped. The very kingdom is at stake. Go and find Vaucanson at his workshop. Ni les invalides. He surely holds the secret to these tireless automats. And perhaps he will know something about the death of my son. How am I to leave the chateau grounds, madame? Go to the riverbank at the far side of the grounds. From there, you can take a boat to Paris. You wanted to find Vaucanson? Vraiment? What if he is the one who is responsible for this unrest? What Vaucanson has done, ma chère, only Vaucanson can undo. This boat will take me to Paris.
bon sang Peace. I was given orders to come here. An automat? The talks. Ah, mais je te reconnais. Your Vaucanson's dancer. I saw you perform in Versailles when you were first presented to the Queen. I have been sent by the Queen. Sa Majesté? Is she safe? Yes. She is at the Chateau de Saint-Cloud. It is guarded by machines. Machines? What has become of the guards? There are no longer any human guards. <sighs> His own troops. He's no better than a rabid dog. I have been sent by the Queen. Sa Majesté? Is she safe? Yes. She is at the Chateau de Saint-Cloud. It is guarded by machines. Machines? What has become of the guards? There are no longer any human guards. <sighs> His own troops. He's no better than a rabid dog. I must find Monsieur de Vaucanson. He holds the secret to the tireless automats. Your creator? Well, that makes two of us. And it seems we've both arrived too late. He must have gone scurrying back to his master. I was only able to find this note written in his hand. It's nothing of any use, though. Only one thing's for certain. Wherever he went, he didn't take his horseless carriage. He left the key. There are machines wreaking havoc on the Esplanade. So I saw, yes. And a little too closely for my liking. It's a miracle I escaped alive. Just by les Invalides, I saw one take a volley of gunfire, halt for an instant, then carry on as if nothing happened. But no machine, however resilient, is indestructible. These automats must have a weakness. Some vital axle or gear that we can target. I don't suppose you would know, you who share their nature. No. Blast. That is unfortunate. I scoured the workshop hoping to shed some light on the matter, but to no avail. If only I had listened to the abbot. But perhaps there's still time. Listen to me. You must find Abbe Grégoire. He knows all about Vaucanson and his machines. Where can I find him? He took it upon himself to carry out a well-intentioned but perilous mission. If he's still alive, he'll be seeking refuge at the Société des Amis des Noirs on Place Saint-Méry, not far from Les Halles. Here, take the key to the carriage. It will no doubt be of use to you. I must attend to a matter of the utmost importance. If my officers are to be believed, the people in arms are calling for the Marquis de Lafayette as their general. And it is my duty to answer their call. So, I put it to you that the fact that the society is in need of re... Uh. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Uh, uh, oh. uh, uh, uh. The demon can speak? Speak, then! Has my time come? I do not know. 
My life is in your hands. It's not worth much. Do what you will with it. I seek Monsieur de Vaucanson. He holds the secret to the tireless automats. And you think you'll find him here, in my quarters? Tell me, who is your master? Aren't you one of Cagliostro's creatures? I serve only the Queen. Ah, the Queen. Well then, that's something else altogether. I found this message in Monsieur de Volconson's carriage. He didn't receive it. That is most worrying. Eugène and I are old friends. I was hoping he would be able to tell me what the deuce is going on. Of course, I doubt he had a hand in this odious display of force. But he spent years in service to the King and his projects. Projects whose macabre ends we're only now discovering. Where could Monsieur de Volconson have gone? How should I know? The situation is dire out there. Everyone is taking shelter wherever they can. Let me think. I know that he and Monsieur Bailly, the astronomer, are close. Perhaps Monsieur Bailly knows more? Where can he be found? He must have taken refuge in his observatory at the Louvre. Otherwise, I doubt he is still alive. He and his associate Lavoisier, the astronomer and the chemist, they were once the pride of the court, but have fallen out of favor. Too close to the common people, it would seem. It's as if only Vaucanson managed to stay in the king's good graces. Sic transit gloria mundi. Who is this Cagliostro? <laughs> you feign ignorance. I do not know. Then you should know that Cagliostro is the king's right-hand man. He claims to be a magician, and he is a self-styled count. A charlatan who is more powerful than a minister. Precisely. I've heard the most troubling rumors about him. He is supposedly the one who enabled the king to breathe life into these killing machines that no key need wind. I admit it sounds highly improbable. And I wouldn't believe a word of it if I didn't have proof standing right before my eyes. Now that I think about it, as you can see, my servants have all abandoned me, and I will soon follow their lead. Those poor people hoped to escape the city while there was still time. A dire vrai, I fear I shall never see them alive again. Before she left, the housekeeper gave me this key. It opens the gate that leads to the Louvre if you are foolhardy enough to attempt it. I found a note written by Eugène de Vaucanson. He mentions the death of the Dauphin at Meudon. What happened that night? How should I know? The child passed away at Meudon. I was in Versailles. Eugène de Vaucanson told you nothing. The only thing he was willing to tell me was that something terrible had happened, and that the circumstances leading to the Dauphin's death were not exactly as described. One thing for certain is that he was extremely upset about what happened, so much so that he refused to spend a single day more in the King's service. But he has apparently changed his mind. Besides the King and Monsieur de Vaucanson, who else witnessed these events? Well, if they followed protocol, Monsieur Le Monnier, the first physician to the king, he must have performed the autopsy on the child. Where can I find him? He lives in Versailles, near the chateau. But he has a practice here in Paris, on rue Saint-Thomas d'Enfer, in the quartier Saint-André des Arts. Eh bien, have you seen Monsieur Bailly? No, not yet. You must. He's probably hiding at his observatory at the Louvre. Perhaps he'll be able to tell you where Eugène de Vaucanson can be found. No one, not even the king, can stop the representatives of the people from continuing their work. Wherever its members are gathered, the Assemblée Nationale lives. That is why we swear never to part. 
and to gather wherever circumstances require it until a constitution is established for the kingdom. Come here, Molani. I salute you. Monsieur, we have just burned our bridges. Nothing and no one can prevent justice from triumphing in this kingdom. Let us not claim victory too soon, Maximilien. And don't forget what we agreed on, if things were to take a turn for the worse. His Lordship, the King's brother, has answered my message. He has agreed to see me, despite the circumstances. The Comte de Provence? Do you trust him? If he still has any influence over the King, we must try. I shall leave immediately for the Luxembourg Palace. Be careful, Antoine. I implore you. The whole quartier is ablaze. Monsieur, this is the last time we shall meet. From now on, we shall do without your help. Eh bien, are you waiting for an invitation to leave? Your Majesty, dare we ask what brought this disgrace upon us? The Count's work has given me complete satisfaction. Your essences and optics are no longer of any use to us. Rejoice, learned scholars. You may now dedicate yourselves to the cause of the Vanoupier. Just a moment. Are we being rebuked for our actions at the Estates General? But, Your Majesty, you are the one who convened this assembly. Leave here at once, Monsieur, before you say anything. You might regret. Stop! Not another step or I shoot. Wait. I have come on behalf of the Marquis de Lafayette. He's taken an automat for his aide de camp. You're no more human than the machines that laid waste to this city. I was not given the same orders as the others, monsieur. Just what mission has the Marquis entrusted you with? I must meet with Abbe Grégoire. Alas, you've come too late. The abbot has got it into his head to go to the Palais de Justice. He is certain that Monseigneur de la Far, the Bishop of Nancy, is being held prisoner by the monstrosity that is wreaking havoc on the Ile de la Cité. But how can he possibly hope to free him? The abbot is a holy man. He would lay down his life to right an injustice. But there isn't one among us who stands the slightest chance against that thing. Not the slightest chance. The Palais de Justice. You, you are made of neither flesh nor blood. You are an automat like those who committed this massacre. I have received no such command. I am carrying out a mission on the orders of the Queen. Your friend on Place Saint-Marie informed me of your intentions. Alas. I was not able to reach the Palais de Justice. 
I fear that the soul of Monsignor de la Farre is lost forever. Was he killed? What has been done to him is a fate worse than death. Far worse. But I could go no further. There were so many bodies, so many innocents strewn about the square, the air there. There was something sinister about it. I felt it poisoning me, body and soul. As for getting back to the Société, it's hopeless. The streets are teeming with machines. But the machine that is wreaking havoc in the area around the Palais is colossal. Much, much larger than yourself. What's more, the soul of His Excellency the Bishop has been imprisoned within this monstrous machine. I'm certain of it. Have you seen the flames coming from the Palais? I don't think anyone... I, Henri de Lafarre, Bishop of Nancy, ask the Lord to bless this assembly and watch over this meeting of the Estates General. Let us not turn a blind eye to the misfortunes of a populace who is condemned to the most abject poverty, for there is no greater sin than to ignore the suffering of one's brethren. The wickedness of the court is an insult to the misery that reigns in our lands. In such dark times, how can one conceive of hiding away to play shepherdess or tinker with clockwork contraptions? What happened? You stopped moving. I feared you had... broken. I do not know. I only touched this ring. Monseigneur de la Farce ring. Bartolissa. Whoever you are, help him, please. Lord, let not that his soul be forever lost. Make haste, I beg of you. Monsieur, Monsieur, I beg you. Leave this place and seek shelter. I have seen these machines in action. I know all too well their capabilities. I implore you, for now because it's yours. Stop! you play heed my words. Flee! We must leave this place, Monseigneur. There's no time. Take this to the clerk's office at the Chatelet.
Ora pro nobis peccatori pas non in ora mortis nostri. Stay back! Remain calm, Monsignor. You are safe now. What did they do to me? This dream. This nightmare. What nightmare, Monsignor? It was terrible. I was but a shadow among shadows. There was so much anger, despair. How, how long has it been? A day? A year? Oh, fire! There were flames everywhere! And death! The suffering I was forced to inflict! Oh Lord, what have I done? Is this the hell that awaits our immortal souls once our time on this earth has ended? If this is true, then how are we to go on living with nothing to hope for, nothing to believe in? How were you captured, Monseigneur? I was with Abbe Grégoire in Place Dauphine. We've gone to speak with the volunteers of the Garde Nationale. We implored them not to take up arms against the King's machines. Alas, they refused to heed our words and we had to leave in, in great haste. After that, mon Dieu, I can't remember a thing. Those poor people. These automats were truly made in the mold of their master. Ruthless to think for just one simple reproach against the court. The king cast me into hell. You owe your freedom to Abbe Grégoire. The good abbot, I tell you, this man is utterly irreplaceable. He has devoted himself, body and soul, to the mission I entrusted to him. Investigating the king's entourage, in particular the man who enabled him to create this ungodly army. But, oh, mon dieu, the notes. What notes, Monseigneur? The notes the abbot placed in my safekeeping. Those heretics took them. I know where the documents can be found. I must go to the Châtelet prison. What shall I do? Where will I be safe? Go and join the abbot at the Société des Amis des Noirs. The way is clear for now, but you must go quickly. More automats will be here soon. Dieu soit loué. It is such a blessing to see you safe and sound. This belongs to you. Bless you, whoever you are. You have our eternal gratitude. <clears throat> I believe you've met Monsieur Julien Raymond from distant Saint-Domingue. He's one of the most eminent members of our organization. And you, mademoiselle, what should we call you? My name is Aegis. Ah, oh, yes. The Aegis. The mighty shield and scourge of Zeus. I wonder, earlier by the Pont Neuf, when you touched Monseigneur's ring, can you explain what happened? The ring called to me. It compelled me to reach out and take it. Come now. The ring called to me. It compelled me to reach out and take it. Come now. The moment I touched it, I was transported. Somewhere else. It was the same strange world that you were in, Monseigneur. Hell, you mean? Or purgatory? I saw things there. I saw Monseigneur giving a sermon. What wickedness is this? This explains the moment when you froze. And this isn't the only time you've experienced something like this, Nespa. That is correct. It also happened with two objects I found in Place Dauphine. And what happened there? 
That is where I found your Bible and your cross, Monseigneur. How did you know they belonged to me? They demanded to be returned to you. You did not regain consciousness until I did so. This is madness! Let us not be so quick to judge, Monseigneur. I witnessed the moment when your cross was taken from you. Then I saw you being locked in that box. Et bien voilà. It is just as I suspected. Here, Aegis, look at this. Over the course of my research, I unearthed this ancient document. I believe I have finally uncovered its meaning. It's a triangle with an identical inscription at each corner. Nimi, memory in ancient Greek. Then, in the center, there is an open eye which symbolizes awakening. Do you understand? The images you saw, Aegis, were Monseigneur de la Farre's own memories. Three echoes of the past tied to personal objects of his. Three Nimi's memories which some dark alchemy had taken from him. Without them, his mind would have remained lost, incomplete. He would never have regained consciousness. But by returning these three objects to him, Aegis, you were able to save his immortal soul. Tell me, Aegis, when you were at the clerk's office at the Chatelet, did you perhaps see a leather wallet near the abbot's documents? No, Monseigneur. Ah. That is a... Monseigneur? That other world where you were held prisoner, do you still feel its effects? This other world, as you call it, Aegis, is none other than hell itself, Gehenna. The place the Lord sends those who worship the beast, but hell didn't keep me. Has God given me a chance to redeem myself, perhaps? What task did you entrust to the abbot? The Holy Office ordered me to keep an eye on the Comte de Cagliostro. This charlatan imagines himself to be the heir of Mesmer, the magnetizer, and seems to have ingratiated himself with the king. There have been disturbing reports about him that could lead to his excommunication. It is said that he can make the dead speak. Can you imagine? I asked the abbot to investigate the surroundings of Eugène de Vaucanson's workshop, where the Count had been seen coming and going for several weeks. I cannot disclose the details of what he discovered there, but it may well be related to the events that have plunged Paris into mourning. I bid you farewell, Monseigneur. Wait just a moment, s'il vous plaît. You are one of Cagliostro's creatures, are you not? What do you mean? When were you... When did you... Awaken. I do not understand, Monseigneur. Well, well, that is to say, you talk, you think, you seem to act with some sort of free will. This was not always the case, that much is clear. You must agree that not all automates are as sophisticated as yourself. I am attempting to unravel the mystery of your true nature. Tell me, what are your very first memories? That is a question I am unable to answer. How strange. In that case, you must surely be able to tell me who taught you what you know. What I know, Monseigneur? Hmm. How can I put it in a way that you'll understand? For example, you call me Monseigneur. How do you know that this is how one addresses a member of the clergy of my rank? I cannot explain it. I believe... Go on, Aegis. I believe that this knowledge is not mine. Well, I never. Did you hear that, Abbot? I caught every word. Monsieur Raymond. What is the aim of this organization? We publish articles and exert our influence on those who are in a position to improve the lot of our unfortunate brethren. Our numbers grow by the day. And we have many illustrious members, such as the Comte de Mirabeau and the Marquis de Lafayette. But it was Monsieur Brissot and the abbot that founded the group. Good old Brissot. Shouldn't he be here by now? Yes, mon père. He should have arrived hours ago. Alas.
There has been no sign of him. I hope to God that no misfortune has befallen him. What fate does the kingdom reserve for those with black skin? According to tradition, any enslaved person who sets foot on French soil is freed. This rule is most problematic in the eyes of planters in the colonies, who would seek to maintain their precious labor force. This is why, for the past 12 years, no black people have been allowed to disembark in any of the kingdom's ports. Those who accompany their masters on the journey are imprisoned in the Admiralty's jails the moment they leave the ship. As for those who manage to evade the authorities, they live in fear of the raids carried out by the Marshalsea. Sea. Are you not subject to these laws, Monsieur Raymond? I am fortunate enough to have been born a subject of the King through my father, and also to have received an education, and to be wealthy. Naturally, that makes all the difference. You are quite a long way from home, Monsieur Raymond. I haven't been back to Saint-Domingue in nearly five years. I left my most trusted men in charge of overseeing my indigo plantation. I came to France with the aim of having an audience with the king. I hoped to convince him to use his automats for agricultural work. I was of the belief that this was the best way to ease the suffering of our enslaved brethren. Alas, it was all for naught. I was only able to get an audience with the Minister of the Navy, and even that was granted reluctantly. Later, when the King convened the Estates General, my hopes were renewed. I saw it as an opportunity to make our voices heard. And then, mon dieu, what a disaster, Aegis. What a complete dis- Monseigneur? Monseigneur, where are you? Seize him! Chaliostro, may you burn in hell! Uh. Lock him up! Ah, my pet automat returns. Pet? What the devil do you mean? It's quite all right, Maximilian. This machine and I are already acquainted. She's not like the others. For one thing, she didn't try to kill me. Extraordinary as it may seem, she's capable of speech and reason, just as you and I. What the deuce? Mademoiselle, please allow me to introduce you to Monsieur Maximilien de Robespierre, lawyer and representative of Artois at the now defunct Estates General. Maximilien de Robespierre. Inconceivable. I'd wager it was she who laid waste to that monstrosity that was blocking access to the convent. And thus, it is thanks to her that I was able to get to you at all. We. Oui. I eliminated it. Am I to understand that you have embraced our cause? I must reach the Bastille, where Monsieur de Vaucanson is being held prisoner. And in whose name are you undertaking this mission, pray tell? I obey the Queen. Ah bon? So the Austrian has turned against her husband? I'm not entirely sure that's cause for celebration. No doubt she hopes to further the aims of her brother, Emperor Joseph. With all this turmoil, she could very well hand him the country. In any case, madame, you must know that you have no chance of reaching the Bastille. <sighs> it seems every effort has been made to restrict access to it. It would seem that the king is keeping his most treasured possessions there. I must complete the task that has been given to me. Your obstinacy changes nothing, madame. Who knows, perhaps in time an opportunity will present itself. But for now, let us consider the positive, and take comfort in the fact that we appear to share a common goal. Bringing down the clockwork tyrant. I must find Monsieur de Vaucanson. 
He holds the secret to the tireless automats. This is surely true, and when the time comes, I will help you to reach the prison. Je vous le promets. But right now, the people are broken, counting their dead. They can but hide and pray they'll survive. Soon, however, those who bear love for their country in their hearts will be ready to fight again. We must prepare this uprising without delay. Since you have secured the area around this stronghold, more brave citoyens will surely join us soon. Alors, can we count on your support? The king must be stopped. I couldn't agree more, madame. Though I despise war, we must rally the people for battle as soon as possible. A reliable source tells me the arsenal at Les Invalides is overflowing with weapons, but a royal automat guards it. I now have no doubt that you are capable of defeating such a creature. But are you prepared to go back into the fray? Yes, I am. Very well. Try to clear the way so we can access the Hotel des Invalides. Once you've done that, we'll take care of the rest. A handful of patriots are already there. Their task was to open a passage to the east, through the Faubourg Saint-Germain. Very well. I will go and find them. You're back, madame. Did you free Les Invalides? Not yet. De Grasse, do not give up. Our salvation is at stake. Were you present when the Estates General was dissolved? Oui, madame. I had a front row seat. I witnessed what it cost to defy the crown. We laid bare before the king the abject misery of his subjects. It was more than he could suffer. So he had the people's representatives dispersed by means of bayonets. At least we only had to contend with soldiers made of flesh and blood. Positively angelic compared to the machines that have swept through Paris. Monsieur de Lafayette, you are safe and sound. Safe and sound indeed. But with a broken soul. I have just returned from Place Dauphine. I understand, monsieur. The Garde Nationale. I was too late. All these brave men, cut down in a single attack. Why was I not among them? Alas, I am condemned to outlive them, and to witness an even greater calamity. What disaster do you fear, monsieur? It's a highly sensitive matter. I've been waiting in vain for a message of the utmost importance. Can you tell me more about it? Ma foi, at this point, I don't really have a choice. You can speak freely. Have no fear. Before the king's attack, I sent a squad of horsemen on a very important assignment. They were to collect a precious cargo at Gros Caillou, not far from the Hotel des Invalides. What sort of cargo? I'm sorry, Aegis, but I swore on my life to keep it a secret. All I can tell you is that it would give us a decisive advantage. But I haven't heard from my men. I'm worried that the exchange may have met with misfortune. It is paramount that I learn what happened and who has the cargo now. The future of the kingdom depends on it. Since it's so important, I will go there myself and attempt to solve this mystery. Dieu tout puissant! Madame de Polignac. It's dreadful ages. All is lost. How were you able to leave Saint Clou? Earlier, after you ventured out into the palace grounds, all of the machines that were guarding us set out after you. I seized the opportunity to go to the stables and jump into a horseless carriage. What are you doing here, madame? The children, Aegis. Charlotte and the Dauphin. The Queen and the Marquis de Lafayette did everything they could do to save them from the King's madness. They spent days working out every detail of this operation with the greatest secrecy. The preparations for departure with our accomplices in the Queen's house. The children's escape hidden inside this wagon. Our meeting here, in this very place, then our departure with the riders who were to ensure our safe passage all the way to Austria. They would have been safe there with their uncle, the Emperor. But you can see for yourself. The children are nowhere to be seen. Poor Monsieur Clary. He... he was the Dauphin's valet. The poor soul gave his life to protect the little ones. Madame. The attackers all bear the same red cap with an embroidered rooster. It's the symbol worn by those who support the Duc d'Orléans. One of them had a map indicating all the staging posts from here to the Principality of Liège. Liège? That rabble-ridden city is where the Duke and his miscreants have established their base. Over here, there are four dead horses, and the body of a third man wearing a red cap. Four horses for three men. 
That means one assailant managed to get away. It's beyond doubt. The Duke's men have taken the children. They're the ones behind this ambush, and they knew every detail of our plans. We were betrayed. But surely the ambush did not go exactly as planned. Three of them lost their lives. That's true. If only we could catch the one who was able to escape. But now that I think about it, the riders that the Marquis de Lafayette promised us, if they made it here, they may have been able to surprise the kidnappers and stop them from carrying out their misdeed. By the grace of God, they may already be on their way to Vienna with the children. I shall get to the bottom of this. Which garrison is this squad from? They are stationed at the Hotel des Invalides. The riders must have left from there. Very well. I will try to retrace their steps. As for you, please return to the Queen at once. You have taken enough risks as it is. Find the children, Aegis. Je vous en supplie. They're after us! You must carry on, I beg you! I... I'll never make it. I'm out of breath. Pour amour de Dieu! Suzanne, just a bit more! We're almost there! The debt was no longer sustainable, Your Majesty. Your mechanical revolution has changed the face of the kingdom, but the coffers are woefully empty. The debt, Monsieur Necker. This debt that you and your banking friends helped to create for your own benefit, and which is now forcing us to levy new taxes. Will my subjects be able to bear another tax? Yes, Your Majesty. As long as it is distributed fairly, the representatives of the nobility, the clergy, and the Third Estate must come to an agreement. That is why we have convened the Estates General. Tomorrow you are to preside over the opening ceremonies. Oh, your estate's general. Nothing good can come of it. You have roused the spirit of rebellion. All I hear about are their damned cahiers de doléances. My rightful enjoyment is being challenged. The streets of Versailles are teeming with loudmouth fanatics with sacrilegious thoughts. Tell me, Monsieur le Ministre, have you purposely set this army of the unwashed against me? Your Majesty, I have always been your most faithful servant. Beware, Necker. Beware. I have a surprise in store for anyone who dares attack my throne. Suzanne, my dear Suzanne, take my hand, please. Don't let them take me away. No. Oh, no, this, this has to stop. I don't want to be tormented anymore. That is not my intention. I have come to rescue you. Rescue me? But 
What on earth are you? It is important. What did you see and hear before you regained consciousness? I had frightful visions, rageful wraiths filled with pain and sorrow. And it was cold enough to curdle the blood. Oh, it's impossible to describe all the rage and anger. I was in another body, I think. So big, so powerful. And there was this commanding voice ordering me to spread terror and death. Did I really hear it? Or did I momentarily lose my mind? Who are you, monsieur? Don't you know? I'm Jacques Necker, Ministre des Finances. Well, I was before I was captured. But this situation suggests that the King has decided to dismiss me from his service. What does he accuse you of? My alleged connivance with the Third Estate, no doubt. And most of all, for having been the first to ask to convene the Estates General. How and when were you captured? When the machines attacked, my wife and I fled our home to hide not far from there, in the Église Sainte-Marie. But we didn't stand a chance against the machines. They overran the nave, wantonly mowing down the faithful. My wife, my poor wife, she wasn't able to escape. I'm sadly convinced of this. As for me, my life was spared only so I could be tormented. What is the meaning of all this? How and when were you captured? When the machines attacked, my wife and I fled our home to hide not far from there, in the Église Sainte-Marie. But we didn't stand a chance against the machines. They overran the nave wantonly mowing down the faithful. My wife, my poor wife, she wasn't able to escape. I'm sadly convinced of this. As for me, my life was spared only so I could be tormented. What is the meaning of all this? What will you do now? There is no future for me in this kingdom. I need to find a safe place where I can prepare for my departure as soon as possible. I will take you to the Cordelier convent. You will be safe there. A la bonne heure, she's back. Aegis, what a joy and relief to see you again. Monsieur. Welcome to our stronghold. I'm sure that everyone here is aware of the great debt we all owe you. As you can see, the most exhausted among us are growing stronger. While the most determined are already planning our counterattack. I did not expect to see you all together. Four days ago, the representatives of the Third Estate gathered in a tennis court. They swore not to separate until they had established a constitution for the nation. But that was not the only oath we swore. All the honorable men who were at Versailles, representatives and patriots, members of the Club Breton, secretly swore to meet here if they were dispersed. You, Aegis, have allowed them to gather once again. Though unfortunately many are missing, we still have hope. Why did you choose to meet in this convent? It was my idea. Voyez-vous, I stay here whenever my obligations bring me to Paris. No other retreat inspires such peace and contemplation. Et puis, truth be told, this building has always felt like a fortress to me. Just look at how thick these walls are. For two whole days, the Patriots in the Quarter consolidated the outer walls to make it an impenetrable citadel. No automat has broken through our defenses yet. 
Where are the monks, mon père? They are secluded in their quarters, praying for the salvation of the people of Paris. However, we bear no illusions. We are weak, we are divided, and we are unarmed. Without you, without your warrior strength, we have no chance of turning things around. You are sent by heaven above, Aegis. From now on, you may consider the Cordelia Convent your headquarters and a welcome refuge. We must speak, you and I, in private, if you please. Monsieur de Lafayette must not hear a word of what I'm about to tell you. What do you mean? You all seem to be certain that I will use my strengths to serve your cause. Are you forgetting that I have a task to accomplish? Not at all, madame. We all know and support your plan to free Monsieur de Vauconson. That is why I've taken the time to think of a way for you to get to the Bastille. I am listening. There is a patriot in Paris whose pamphlets have aroused Monsieur de Lafayette's ire. His anger is so strong that the poor man had to disappear to escape arrest. I know that he is secretly hiding in the quarries in Montmartre. A labyrinth he is said to know like the back of his hand. If anyone can help you navigate the obstacles that keep you from the Bastille, it is the elusive Monsieur Marat. Very well. I will go and find him. Monsieur Necker. I owe you my life, madame. So I am embarrassed to ask you for anything more. Do not fear. You have my full attention. Suzanne, my beloved wife. I cannot bring myself to accept her death. Despite all the evidence, I still hope to see her alive again. I need to be sure. Mon Dieu, what have I done to deserve such a fate? Why has the King sworn to destroy me? And all that I hold dear, after everything I've done for him, my abnegation. Why would the King owe you anything? I dedicated my life to the Kingdom as his minister. On my life and my fortune as well. I refused to accept any remuneration for my services, in order to keep the accounts balanced. And I personally filled the King's coffers with two and a half million livres from my own private accounts. Bonds in the Caisse des Comptes, which the King keeps in a tailor-made armoire de fer in the Palais des Tuileries. He stores all his secrets there. I'd wager there's enough in there to sully his reputation a hundred times over. You must retrieve these bonds post-haste, madame. They must not be used to allow this madman to build more murderous automats. Do I have any chance of opening it? Don't even think about it, madame. Despite your incredible strength, that safe is said to be impenetrable. It was designed precisely to that effect. I personally never had access to it. I suppose that its contents were too unofficial for the honest minister that I always was. Who has the key? The king does, that's for sure. Anyone else? How could I know? His shadow advisors, most likely. Now that I think about it, there's a rumor that has been going round Versailles for a while now. It's said that Monsieur de Mirabeau used to come and go as he pleased at the Tuileries. That he oversaw diplomatic missions for the Crown. Not in any official capacity, of course. Who knows? He might know more about this matter than I do. I will ask him. I will look into what happened to your wife. Bless you, madame. Where should I start my investigation? In the Faubourg Saint-Germain, east of Les Invalides. We were separated in the Église Sainte-Marie, on Rue de Bourgogne. I shall be off. You are the only hope of seeing my beloved wife again, and of foiling the plans of the clockwork tyrant. Monsieur le Marquis. I'm listening, Aegis. I went to the meeting point you indicated. I had an unexpected encounter there. Get to the facts. Who did you meet there? Madame de Polignac, the Queen's favorite. She made no secret of her reason for being in that desolate place. So now I know all about the precious cargo that is the cause of your great concern. Seigneur, the children, what happened? Tell me that nothing bad has happened to them. That remains to be determined. 
One thing is certain. Charlotte and the young Dauphin are missing. The evidence points to an ambush by the Duc d'Orléans' men. They apparently attacked the wagon the children were hiding in. How... how the hell did they know? This ambush could not have taken place without an accomplice. You were betrayed. A plague on Orléans and his damned informants. They have taken the children. That still remains to be seen. It seems that the Duke's men were interrupted while carrying out their task. Three of them lost their lives. A fourth was able to escape. Excellent. I bet it was my hussars who sent the vermin running. But why the hell haven't they reported to me yet? Because they perished. Every last one of them. Mowed down by the royal automats. I found their remains outside the stables. Oh no, 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 no. The poor souls. But then, the children. They must be in the hands of the scoundrel Orléans. We have no proof of this. In that case, there is not a minute to lose. We must get to the bottom of this and save the children. If there is still time. Oh, if I could get my hands on that rat Marat. I'd find a way to make him talk, believe you me. Goodbye, Monsieur le Marquis. Aegis, I'd like to talk to you about my research. Do you have a few moments to spare for me? Certainly, mon père. I am listening. I've carefully collected the testimony of our companions here. Then I compared them with the observations made during my investigation of the man who calls himself Cagliostro. I came to quite the shocking conclusion. I think... I believe... I have discovered how the royal automats remain constantly in motion. Like clocks that never need winding. They get their energy from the souls of the dead, Aegis. They drink from the anima essence that permeates the purgatory described by Monseigneur de la Far. These machines feed on the dead. The greater the massacre, the deeper the river where they slake their thirst. Is there any way to stop the bloodshed, mon père? I believe there is always hope, Aegis. As long as I remain free to pursue my research, I will never lose faith. I keep thinking about the three Nemes, these echoes. All of this is clearly related to Nicholas Flamel's work. The Alchemist? Precisely, mon ami. And this leads me to fear the worst. What have we to fear from an Alchemist who died nearly four centuries ago? Not him, per se. Rather, the heretic who is exploiting his discoveries. This poses a grave danger to us all. What do you fear, mon père? What do I fear? Nearly two months ago, the king forbade anyone from setting foot inside the Église Saint-Jacques de la Boucherie, near the Hôtel de Ville. He had the priests forcibly removed. They hardly even had time to save the church's sacred relics. Since then, only our Father in Heaven knows what they've been doing there, hidden away from the people of Paris. Oh dear. Flamel's tomb. My thoughts exactly, Monseigneur. Legend has it that Flamel was buried with his Lapis Philosophorum. What is the Lapis Philosophorum, mon père? The Philosopher's Stone. Where do I begin? No one knows its true nature, or even what it might look like. All that is known is that it is said to grant untold riches and eternal life to whoever possesses it. Its very existence is questioned, of course. But if it's true, just imagine what sinister purpose the king and his accomplices might find for it. We must elucidate this matter at any cost. Where is this tomb? In the church's crypt. The priests always ensured that it remained undisturbed, despite the mystery surrounding it. But now they're no longer there to protect it. We need to know for certain. But how? There are automats everywhere. Aegis. Oui, mon père. Will you help us get to the bottom of this? Did you not say that it was impossible to enter the church? There is perhaps a solution. The penitent's door behind the Châtelet leads to the Quartier de l'Hôtel de Ville. It's only opened on Good Friday, but this year, 
I had the honor and good fortune to lead the procession. Here is the key. Goodbye, mon père. My respects, Monseigneur. I didn't expect to see you again so soon, Egis. We missed you when we had to leave our shelter at Place Saint-Méry. The path that led us to this convent was not an easy one, believe me. Goodbye, Monseigneur. Monsieur Raymond. Aegis, we are very pleased to see you again. It was very unwise of us to leave the Société without such a capable bodyguard as yourself. It is a miracle that we got here safely. What do you want to talk to me about? Have you ever heard of the Club de Massiac, Aegis? No, monsieur. It's an association that meets at the Hotel de Massiac, just west of Le Al. It counts some of the wealthiest plantation owners in the Empire. Those from Saint-Domingue and the Petite Santé are most formidable adversaries. They are waging a war of influence to keep the slave trade going and resort to the vilest methods to achieve their ends. They worship nothing but money. And their greed is matched only by their cruelty. Regrettably, my interests occasionally require me to suffer their company. Two months ago, I was in Le Havre to settle some business with the Admiralty, when I overheard a conversation between two planters from Bastère. If they are to be believed, the Club de Massiac is plotting to create sleepless slaves, des esclaves sans sommeil. Those were their exact words. It's hard to say what this could possibly mean. But I fear they plan to administer some foul drug to their slaves to force them to toil day and night, without rest. Our organization will not let these poor souls endure such a hell. Aegis, we must look into this. It is a matter of great urgency. You speak of greed, Monsieur Raymond. But could you enlighten us as to what makes you any different from the planters you condemn? What exactly do you accuse me of, Monsieur de Robespierre? S'il vous plaît, do tell. Do you not also exploit the labor of these poor souls yourself on your indigo plantation? I fight every minute of every day to improve their condition. No one would have the audacity to deny this. If that's the case, then why wait? Free them. You preach abolition, yet you continue to line your pockets at their expense. The truth is, you refuse to upend the established colonial order because your entire fortune depends on it. It's easy to criticize from atop Mount Olympus, Maximilian. You know nothing of the realities of Saint-Domingue. What would happen to all these people if I freed them tomorrow? Without an education, without a livelihood, I would be condemning them to the most abject misery. No, I must act with both compassion and realism. Any reform, revolutionary or not, must be taken step by step, with moderation and prudence. This reform is not so difficult. I've begun it myself, at La Belle Gabrielle, my plantation in Guyane. There you will not find slaves, but workers who earn a weekly wage. And my plantation is no less profitable. Ah, yes, profit. Because that's the most important thing. Don't you see, the law of nature gives every man the right to cultivate his own land. Monsieur, calm yourselves. I implore you. Now is no time to quarrel. What Monsieur Raymond has related to us is extremely worrying. We must find out more about this plot to create sleepless slaves as quickly as possible. Aegis, you are the only one who stands a chance of making it to the Hotel de Massiac alive. Did you go to the Hotel de Massiac? No, not yet. Remember, it's by Le Al, just west of the Marché des Innocents. What is the aim of this organization? We publish articles and exert our influence on those who are in a position to improve the lot of our unfortunate brethren. Our numbers grow by the day, and we have many illustrious members, such as the Comte de Mirabeau and the Marquis de Lafayette. But it was Monsieur Brissot and the Abbot that founded the group. Good old Brissot. Shouldn't he be here by now? Yes, Mon Père. He should have arrived hours ago. Alas, there has been no sign of him. I hope to God that no misfortune has befallen him. What fate does the kingdom reserve for those with black skin? According to tradition, 
Any enslaved person who sets foot on French soil is freed. This rule is most problematic in the eyes of planters in the colonies, who would seek to maintain their precious labor force. This is why, for the past 12 years, no black people have been allowed to disembark in any of the kingdom's ports. Those who accompany their masters on the journey are imprisoned in the Admiralty's jails the moment they leave the ship. As for those who manage to evade the authorities, they live in fear of the raids carried out by the Marshalsea. Are you not subject to these laws, Monsieur Raymond? I am fortunate enough to have been born a subject of the King through my father, and also to have received an education, and to be wealthy. Naturally, that makes all the difference. You are quite a long way from home, Monsieur Raymond. I haven't been back to Saint-Domingue in nearly five years. I left my most trusted men in charge of overseeing my indigo plantation. I came to France with the aim of having an audience with the king. I hoped to convince him to use his automats for agricultural work. I was of the belief that this was the best way to ease the suffering of our enslaved brethren. Alas, it was all for naught. I was only able to get an audience with the Minister of the Navy, and even that was granted reluctantly. Later, when the King convened the Estates General, my hopes were renewed. I saw it as an opportunity to make our voices heard. And then, mon Dieu, what a disaster, Aegis. What a complete disaster. See you later, perhaps. Eh bien. Do you come bearing news from Monsieur Marat? No, not yet. I have it on good authority that he is in the quarries in Montmartre. He's the only person who could show you a way to reach the Bastille. Don't forget. Is your plan to arm the populace going as planned? Oh, far from it, madame. The situation is hopeless. Even if they were armed and formed into battalions, the Patriots would not be able to fight. Why is that? Most of the strategic points in the city are inaccessible. A strange illness strikes all who try. They are seized by an irrational fear, one so great that those who do not lose consciousness go mad or perish on the spot. This makes it impossible to do anything. Any attempt at an uprising is a fool's errand. The locations you mention share a common feature, a statue holding a lantern. That's right. From what little I could make out, they appear to be depictions of a Vestal Virgin watching over the sacred fire. Une lanterne des morts! What do you mean, Monsieur? Lanterns of the dead. Ancient stone pillars that are found near some cemeteries. Our ancestors kept a fire going on top of them. Today, no one knows what they were used for. A symbol of light triumphing over darkness, perhaps? Others claim that human bones, mercury and lime, were burnt there. Some odious sorcery that was meant to entrap the tormented souls that wandered around the burial grounds. That makes sense and confirms my observations. I am now certain that the King's Lanterns capture the anima essence of the dead who have been cast into purgatory. And that this essence is what allows the automats to stay in motion, without needing a key to wind them. Paternoster quies in celis sanctificetur nomentum. Now that I think about it, madame, you, obviously, are not subject to the harmful effects of these lanterns. No, au contraire. When activated, these statues reveal an apparatus that allows me to repair myself. It follows that if you destroy these lanterns, the people will be free to fight again. Unfortunately, they are preternaturally strong. Nothing can so much as damage them. If only Monsieur Lavoisier were with us, he would surely be able to solve this conundrum. Were you present when the Estates General was dissolved? Oui, madame. I had a front row seat. I witnessed what it cost to defy the crown. We laid bare before the king the abject misery of his subjects. It was more than he could suffer. So he had the people's representatives dispersed by means of bayonets. At least we only had to contend with soldiers made of flesh and blood, positively angelic compared to the machines that have swept through Paris. Goodbye, Monsieur de Robespierre. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Minister Necker claims that you are a familiar face at the Tuileries Palace. That old story. Will it hound me until I have drawn my last breath? This, madame, is nothing but an unfounded rumor that I am trying in vain 
to dispel. To what do I owe the displeasure of having to defend myself once again? I must get hold of some documents that are kept in an armored safe in the King's chambers. What lock could resist your talents? Minister Necker said it was indestructible. Hmm. Oh, I see. Well, let me think. Who could help you? After all, a lock is nothing more than a simple mechanism. If only Monsieur Bailly were here, he would find a solution for you in no time. To free him, I would have to go back to the Louvre. Well, then I think you should. Now, who else might be of use? Oh, there's Monsieur Lavoisier as well, our gunpowder commissioner. If he were here, I'm sure he'd have no trouble finding you something you could use to blow the door off that stubborn safe. Sadly, he's still at Luxembourg. Then it is high time you rescued him, madam. Now, if you'll forgive me, I have an urgent matter to attend to. You are forgiven for everything. In that case, it has been a pleasure, madam. Monsieur Necker. Madame? Eh bien, do you come bearing good news? Your wife. You may rest easy, monsieur. Your wife escaped the massacre. She returned home and left you this letter. Mon Dieu. She's going to meet our daughter and son-in-law at our charity hospital. She may already be there. Madame, I did not dare to dream of such an outcome. My wife and daughter. Can you imagine? And I thought I had lost both of them. The three of us will be able to leave the kingdom and put these horrors behind us forever. What about the bombs? They are not in your possession. No, not yet. You must ensure they do not benefit the king, madame. You will find them in the Amois de Fer, in the Palais des Tuileries. Do with them as you see fit. As long as the king does not use them. As for me, I'm going to find my family at once. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I pray that your efforts will be successful. Adieu, madame. Adieu. Minister Necker has given his bonds to me. Mon Dieu. This sum is nearly impossible to comprehend. I spoke with Monsieur Lavoisier in the first days of the Estates General. As director of the Caisse des Comptes, he estimates that these bonds currently represent one-fifth of the kingdom's treasury. Wealth that the king squanders for his personal benefit according to his whims. Ma foi. Monsieur Necker certainly has been very generous to his adoptive country. I'm afraid you are mistaken. Monsieur Lavoisier claimed that this loan was granted at an exorbitant rate. Whatever his fondness for the nation, Monsieur Necker never lost his business sense. Eh bien, monsieur. To what use shall we employ this boonful fortune? If I could spend it, I'd do everything I could to return to the people their confiscated freedom. To begin, I would get them the bread they so sorely need. It is only after the scourge of famine has been vanquished that armed patriots might then be able to rise up against despotism. And where will you find wheat, Robespierre? Will you steal it from under the noses of the automats who have sworn to destroy the human race? As for arming the people, this is another one of your delusions. How could your ragged pack of wretches win any sort of battle that be unable to lift a sword? When you insult the people, you insult me, Monsieur de Lafayette. I am not insulting anyone, Robespierre. But I happen to know what it takes to fight, unlike you. Monsieur, I was but a lad of fifteen when I took up arms. And everyone here knows my role in the liberation of America from British rule. If you allow me to dispose of these bonds, I will found an army that will annihilate the Clockwork King's diabolical machines. As soon as I have the opportunity to leave Paris, I will rally the officers and troops that are stationed in the provinces. Then, I will call for a mass uprising. I will have more than enough money to pay their wages and procure the weapons we need. And you will have obedient troops at your beck and call, ready to repress anyone who challenges your power. These troops will only serve the will of the people. I swear it. Are you sure that the king has spared the rest of the kingdom, Monsieur le Marquis? I am almost certain of it, mon père. Despite all of his resources, the king does not have enough manpower to occupy all the garrisons in the country. Aegis, 
No member of this assembly can force your hand. The choice is yours. To whom will you entrust Monsieur Neckel's bonds? The bonds are not yet in my possession. Then please continue your search. They broke down the doors! Flee, monsieur! Flee! They're destroying everything in their path! De Glass, please, try to save anything you can! I have just come from the Tuileries. The Armoire de Fer has been ransacked. Diable! Someone beat us to it. This is very unfortunate. God only knows what we would have found there. Whoever it was had to fight for it. I found a body there, killed by automats. Mon Dieu! How dreadful. Dreadful indeed. Especially since I discovered this in the victim's hand. And what is that, pray tell? A dueling pistol. With your name engraved on its plate. Oh, I... May we? You're right. It is my pistol. It was stolen along with a number of other things. It happened just before the Estates General at my lodgings in Versailles. But how on earth did my weapon end up in the hands of this poor soul? I am certain we will find an explanation. You appear to have burnt these papers in a hurry. I'm eager to hear your explanation. It's nothing at all, I assure you. Frivolous letters that were cluttering my desk. I find your defense unconvincing. Why won't you tell me the truth? You don't understand. This is a matter of the utmost importance that I cannot discuss with a creature such as yourself. I am an automat, monsieur. This is true. But I serve the queen. And my only aim is to put a stop to the crimes that have befallen the kingdom. Well, know that you're not alone in serving the queen. What was in those letters you threw into the fire? My private correspondence with the king. I had a key to the armoire, which served as a mailbox. Are you conspiring with the king? No, you don't understand. I was something of a shadow advisor, a, a diplomat, working in complete discretion. I feared his stubbornness would lead the kingdom to ruin. So I tried to reassure him regarding the aims of the Third Estate. But when Vaucanson told me what happened at Meudon, I realized it was a lost cause. You claim to be a friend of the Queen. The King has gone insane. After what happened at Meudon, that much is clear. We can no longer expect any leniency from him. Hence my support for his wife. She's a headstrong woman, and much wiser than she lets on. You must know that she means to put her youngest on the throne, the young prince, Louis Charles. A regency would restore peace and unity to the kingdom. Then all that would remain would be to establish a constitution. I have the support of the people. They trust me. I'm the only one that can bring about these reforms. I found your pistol in the hands of a dead man. Who was this unfortunate soul? Mathieu, one of the servants I had sent to retrieve the letters. I gave him the pistol for self-defense. Alas, it seems it was of little use to him against the King's automats. Tell me, what happened at Madon? It's all here in this letter, written in the King's own hand. Please. Give it to the Queen. She must learn the truth. Why were you in such a hurry to destroy your correspondence? The letters contained sensitive information about my Third Estate colleagues. If it had gotten out, I would have surely lost my allies' trust. 
as well as any hope of establishing a regency along with it. Monsieur le Marquis. I'm listening, Aegis. The bonds are in my possession. And to whom do you intend to give them? I have decided to use these bonds to support your cause. I implore you to put them to good use. I swear it to you. You made the right choice, Dancer. Only professional soldiers and well-trained conscripts stand a chance of winning back the kingdom. You monster. What do you want with me? Wasn't it enough for you to steal my dancer? I'm merely obeying the king, mademoiselle. Don't be afraid. You and your beloved machine will soon be reunited. I give you my word. <laughs> Voila. Here we are. Do you see that window? That's where she's waiting for you. You're so beautiful. You'll stay with me always, n'est-ce pas? Without you, mon ami, I'd be all alone. Can I help you, Aegis? What is the significance of these objects steeped in memories? Nimi's. I have reread every word that I have on them. Pages that have remained unintelligible to this day. These echoes go back to the beginning of time. To that fateful day in ancient Greece when some dark magician took it into his head to bind a soul to an inanimate object. You see, Aegis, there is nothing more diabolical, nothing more unnatural than this sorcery. The soul is the very essence of the divine. It refuses to submit to such an abomination and resists, eventually breaking. The earliest necromancers whose works have survived through the centuries all describe the same phenomenon. When a soul is fragmented, three shards of memory are torn from its consciousness and take shelter in three objects that the victim held dear. It's as if these memories wish to remain bound to the mortal who had held them until then. I found this notebook written in Latin. Indeed. Medieval Latin, to be precise. Oh, hold on. Balsam. Aegis, what a find. This handwriting. I would recognize it anywhere. It's in Nicholas Flamel's own hand. Give me some time to study this, and I'll tell you what I'm able to glean from it. Have you finished reading the notebook, mon père? Yes, Aegis. And what I learned from it puzzles me. In this diary, Flamel tells of three journeys. Three journeys into what he calls the in-between. A strange world filled with wandering souls. Tormented spirits that are unable to ascend to heaven. 
This world. It's where Cagliostro's victims were trapped until I freed them. En effet, I believe you're right. But that's not all. Flamel planned to return there a fourth time. He wrote this in the final paragraph, in his handwriting, dated 21st of March 1418. That was the day before he died, Aegis. What if his body died while his soul was traveling through limbo? What if he were trapped, a prisoner in this purgatory? Aegis, because of your unique nature, we have an incredible opportunity. What do you mean, mon père? If the soul that animates you has been bound to the automaton that serves as its vessel, then it can be separated from it too. And if this were the case, the soul would travel to purgatory, where Cagliostro entraps the souls of his victims. Hold on. Are you trying to convince me to go and find Nicholas Flamel? I'm offering you a chance to speak to the man who discovered the Philosopher's Stone. Surely you won't pass it up. Assuming I agree to venture into purgatory, do I even have a chance of finding him there? Certainly. According to this journal, the soul flies to the zenith of the place where it left the body of the deceased. Or that of the pilgrim, in this case. If Flamel's soul is trapped in purgatory, as we've guessed, you'll need to go to the house where he drew his dying breath. Is it still standing? Of course. It's on Rue de Montmorency, in the Quartier de l'Hôtel de Ville. You can get there via the cemetery of the Église Saint-Jacques. And how do you plan to free my spirit from this automat? We would simply need to break the bond between them. And to do this, we would need to stop your machinery. For a short time, of course. We don't want to lose you, ma chère. As for the rest, it will be a question of mechanics, chemistry, or electric currents, or something or other. Therein lies the problem. This is far beyond my comprehension. But it is fascinating, isn't it? Monsieur Bailly and Monsieur Lavoisier could probably shed some light on the matter, if only they were free to join us. Goodbye, mon père. Monsieur Raymond. Go on, Aegis. I went to the Hotel de Massiac as agreed. What I discovered goes beyond your darkest conjectures. The club's members have no intention of merely depriving their slaves of rest. Rather, with the King's support, they plan to replace them with Automat Harvesters. The Count of Cagliostro is behind the plan. Ma foi. But such a plan would certainly only improve the lot of these unfortunate people. You are mistaken, mon père. If the planters get their way, they will have a greater need of slaves than ever. Only this time, they intend to slaughter them to power their machines. Quelle abomination! Par tous les saints! Four days ago, the Paris Guard captured a hundred black people. They were to be sacrificed as part of an experiment to test the effectiveness of the automat harvesters. Luckily, I was able to prevent the massacre. Where are they now? In a place they call the Depot des Noirs. I don't know where it is, but I managed to get the key. It bears the inscription, Tour du Diable. The Devil's Tower is a prison in Vincennes, within the Chateau walls. That's three leagues from here. We'll only be able to free the prisoners once we're able to move freely ourselves. At least they were spared the fate that the King and his accomplices had planned for them. And what will you do with the two servants you employ, Monsieur Raymond? I will continue to treat them well, as I always have. However, under the laws you insist on following, they will become slaves again the moment they leave the Kingdom for Saint-Domingue. Certainly not, Monsieur de Robespierre. What kind of a man would I be? if what I have heard had not opened my eyes. The planters of Masiak have been proven to be nothing but avaricious murderers. I thought I was dealing with opposition, but now I discover them to be vile enemies, from whom it would be vain to expect any compromise. From this day on, I will fight against their interests with all my strength, and will not lay down my arms until the last slave in the Empire has been freed. Rest assured, then, that the people will fight by your side, Monsieur Raymond. That's the spirit, my friends. Vive l'égalité! Monsieur Marat. Huh? Hey? Who, who goes there? Ah, ah la diable, je m'attendais. So, this is the famous Huntress Diana I've heard so much about. Truly. 
Tis an honor, madame. Now let me have a look at you. Are we? You're just as they described. An angel of death descended from the heavens to vanquish the clockwork tyrant. Who depicted me this way, monsieur? Mes compagnons, madame. Chief among them is Monsieur Chaudelot de la Clos. They have observed you dispensing justice all over the city. A most expeditious justice at that, as befits the crimes committed by our good king. Hmm. What a strange machine you are. Gifted with intelligence, clearly, but also with speech and the freedom to do as you please. Cependant, you are still an automat. Who is your master? I serve only myself, and you, Monsieur Marat. Who is your master? I serve not a master, but a cause. That of the Duke d'Orléans. His cousin the king has no place on that throne, and nor does his wretched dynasty. The Bourbons, along with their wars, their crimes, and their vices, are finished. It's high time their scepter be passed to an enlightened, just monarch. One who is sympathetic to the people's sufferings. But now that I think about it, madame, look at us. We've been standing around chatting like old friends for several minutes, and I still don't know to what I owe the pleasure of your visit. I must go to the Bastille, where Monsieur de Vaucanson is imprisoned. We, oui. Such a sad fate for a king's lackey. And what do you want with your creator? This man whose blood-stained hands built the army that's currently setting Paris ablaze. What Vaucanson has done, only Vaucanson can undo. Fair enough. Alas, while I come and go as I please through these tunnels, it is impossible to enter the fortress. Impossible, dites-vous. A sanguinary automat is spreading death and terror in the depths of this quarry. At the cost of their lives, my comrades were able to sabotage the floor of the cave to limit its movements. Nevertheless, it stands between you and the tunnel that leads to the Quartier du Temple. And that's the only way to reach the Bastille. And yet, that's exactly what I intend to do, Monsieur Marat. A votre guise. I shall not attempt to dissuade you. There is one small thing, though. I had to disable the mobile walkways to protect myself from the automats. But since you managed to come here, I assume you already know a lot about these devices. Indeed. Here. This would allow you to reach the lower tunnels. Have you fixed the walkway? I am working on it, Monsieur Marat. That's the only way to reach the lower tunnels. The mechanism is on this level, near the walkway. Who laid on this blood-stained mattress? Oh, it's a strange story. I suppose you heard about what happened in Place Dauphine? Indeed. I went there. Well, we took in one of the survivors of the massacre. The only survivor, it seems. Despite his serious injuries, he was particularly talkative. What did he tell you? He kept saying that Lafayette was a traitor in the King's pay. That the flaxen-haired hero had deliberately handed his brand new National Guard over to the Automats. What evidence did your guest have? Nothing substantial, unfortunately. It was based on a simple rumor that was circulating in the camp shortly before the royal army attacked. It would appear that several volunteers carried a yellow cartridge in their cartridge pouches. Most likely a subtle way for the conspirators to recognize each other. The subsequent disaster would tend to confirm this hypothesis. Uh, vous ne croyez pas? These are suspicions. Nothing more. Right you are. Oh, if only I had proof of this conspiracy. Then I'd be able to scutter the ambitions of that cur Lafayette for good. The would-be dictator's plans would be foiled. I must get to the bottom of this urgently. Very well. I encourage you to do so. But remember that the Marquis could not have acted alone. If you can't find anything implicating him, look into the members of his staff. Start in Place Dauphine where those brigands sullied the ground with their boots. Monsieur Marat, D2 
Did you take part in an operation that aimed to kidnap the Dauphin and his sister Charlotte? Me? Take part in an operation? Nonsense. My only weapon is my pen, and I have sharpened it, believe you me. That said, we did receive some information concerning the children. Unfortunately, I'm sworn to secrecy. If such an operation did indeed take place, Monsieur de Leclos would have been the one behind it. Alas, I fear that he is no longer of this world. There is little doubt that he and his men fell in the galleries. Dites-moi, Monsieur Marat. What exactly are you doing hiding in a quarry? I've made a lot of enemies. In my publications, I have always denounced the corrupt and those who corrupt them. These vampires who cheat the weak and bleed the nation dry. Chief among them, that crook Lafayette, that Tren Sabre, a career soldier who thinks he's Caesar, not content to maintain an army of rats. This blondin has all the Chatelet's judges in his pocket. It seems my prose upset him, as he swore to hunt me down. If I hadn't fled, I'd have been done for, there's no doubt about that. Who are your compagnons? Patriots who come and go in the quarries throughout the city, under the command of Monsieur Leclos. Alas, there are few left. And I wager that it won't be long before the machines that have taken over our hiding place find me. My hours are numbered. Mais vous-même, have you found any companions for yourself? Members and supporters of the Third Estate have gathered at the Cordelier Convent. Would you be so kind as to name them? In addition to Monsieur de Robespierre, the Comte de Mirabeau is there. Le Flambeau de Provence. An artful chameleon who skillfully dons every color of the rainbow. The Marquis de Lafayette, Monsignor de... Say no more. They're just the privileged class celebrating the marriage of cowardice and treason. With adversaries like them, the king is sure to triumph. Here you are at last. This is where the path to the Bastille begins. And to think, I would have never thought you'd make it this far. Cependant, I would advise you not to rush. The fighting in these tunnels has weakened the structure. If you go in there, I'm afraid you won't be able to turn back. Delor, I have just one bit of advice to give you. Before going any further, make sure you're not leaving behind any unfinished business. Any commitments that you have not fully met. I shall return to my hiding place. In these unsure times, you can never be too careful, ne croyez-vous pas? This time, it's over for me. The princess was ransacked, and I barely escaped from the guards sent to arrest me. I must disappear, and hope that things will one day turn to my advantage. In truth, the timing is excellent. According to my informants, the king is planning a coup de force against the Third Estate. I think it's high time for all of us to go underground with you. Once we're hidden in the catacombs, we can prepare a counter-offensive in peace. Does the Duke approve of this withdrawal? No, oh, that fool. He's indecisive as usual. Always busy dreaming about his cousin's crown. But I've prepared the terrain. He will let me do as I please as long as I serve his interests. Look out, look out behind you! 
Look, Chloe, you're alive. I'm a platoon. Ready. Fire! Fire at will! Oh, this is new. Oh, well, we can't stop them. They're upon us. Fixed bayonets. Fixed bayonets! The fighting has stopped. It's over. Voyez? The Huntress Diana appeared to us. She's the one who saved you. But the troops... Where are the troops? You are the only survivor, Leclerc. No. No. We were so close. But those machines... An entire battalion would have been unable to defeat them. We were forced to retreat. Chased into these tunnels by the automats. It was madness to attempt an attack on the Bastille. You're wrong. I'm a military man. It was a bold maneuver, but it was a calculated risk. After all, that old fortress is a pile of stones with no buffers, curtain walls, or bastions. As for its garrison, our agents were certain. Only a handful of veterans should have been there. A single charge should have sufficed to disperse them. But the king made other arrangements. He increased the fortress's defenses and placed a swarm of automats at the service of a terrible machine. Why did you launch this attack? Three of our companions were held captive in the fortress. Our best agents. Agents? Spies, if you prefer. We, the supporters of the Duc d'Orléans, have always worked in the shadows, within the Queen's entourage, in the tribunes of the Estates General, among the Patriots in the clubs, amidst the rank and file in the army. We have had some success, you have to admit. What machinations have you discovered? Enough to make Monsieur Marat's ink flow and bring down our rivals. Necker's speculations, Lafayette's dishonorable behavior, Mirabeau's corruption, and many darker secrets. Such as Lafayette's plot to rescue the Dauphin and his sister Charlotte. How on earth do you know that? She seems as well informed as we are. Once again, the King has won. That won't always be the case. But right now I have something urgent I must do. Why did you launch this attack? Three of our companions. Agents? Spies within the Queen's entourage. We have had some success, you have to admit. What machinations have you discovered? Enough to make Monsieur Marat's ink flow and bring down Ecker's speculations, Lafayette's dishonorable behavior, and many darker secrets. Tell me about this machine that guards the Bastille. We were prepared to face an enemy, not an executioner. That thing, half butcher's block, half stocks, was designed to make heads roll. Who captured you, monsieur? There was some confusion in the fray, but Cagliostro was in charge. He was the one who ordered me to be shut up in that coffin. Then I was thrown into that awful place where I lost consciousness. After that, everything is a series of blurred visions with a voice that ordered me to kill again and again. I intend to enter the Bastille and free Monsieur de Vauconson. For what possible reason, mon dieu? She claims that he's the only one who can stop the machines. Indeed, it's possible. In that case, if you're ready to face the abomination that blocked my path and slaughtered my lieutenants, then don't waste a second. Let's not stay here much longer, Mara. Let's head back to our burrow. There's still some wine left, n'est-ce pas? More than enough, Leclerc. More than enough. Wonderful. We'll drink to our broken dreams until this finally comes to an end. That's enough, Monsieur Lecomte. My assistants and I are exhausted. We're not gravediggers, à la fin. Oh, I understand. The task you have been given does not please you. Perhaps you do not find it worthy of your high qualifications? Indeed. My family has been dedicated to serving the kingdom for over a century. And you cannot ignore what it has cost us. 
I refuse to fall that low. Very well. As you wish. Since this is the case, you will have a more prestigious assignment starting today. Was there anything else? What about my assistants? Will they come with me? Unfortunately not, Monami. But I promise you that they will never complain about their fate again. Monsieur le Comte! Monsieur le Comte, are you there? The prisoners, they're suffering! What is the meaning of this? <laughs> As promised, I have interceded on your behalf. The king has named you Gouverneur de la Bastille. Do you realize what an honor this is? Put an end to this sinister farce, Monsieur le Comte. Order your machines to unhand me at once. Ah! Listen to my voice, mon ami. Nothing but my voice. The death sentences delivered by court order are nothing more than cowardly murders. Barbaric crimes committed legally in the name of the entire nation. These cruel laws are the doing of the tyrants who rule us. They are the chains they have always used to oppress the human race. And that, mes amis, is why the death penalty must be abolished. Well said. No, Your Grace. I am your most faithful servant. Monsieur, listen to me. But I can no longer do what you ask of me. Listen to me, Bosson. Kill, kill, and kill again. What do you mean? Of what crimes do you accuse yourself? The heads must roll. They must roll straight into the pit. C'est la Sophie. Who are you, Monsieur? Uh, who am I? Oh, I am Charles-Henri Sanson, executor of court rulings. The executioner of Paris. The executioner? Oh no, not anymore. That death factory. We had to lead the horde of the tortured victims there and hand them over to killers who are far more efficient and skilled than us. When I tried to give up my position, the King and the Count offered me a new role. Greffier at the Bastille. An easy job. And I fell into their trap. Oh. But now that I think about it, they must be the ones who sent you. They want my head. You're rambling. I am Aegis, their worst enemy. Come to rescue Monsieur de Vaucanson. Oh. His Majesty's honored guest. The man for whom our good king reserves his most ruthless treatment. No one deserves to be punished like that. Here, take this key. Monsieur de Vaucanson's cell is downstairs. And do not delay. He is dying, madame. He's dying. Oh, that was... 
À ton arrive À mon enfant Oh mon dieu They did it They did it They've turned my sweet daughter into a cold machine It's all right. Stay calm. Well, Ludia, what has Cagliostro told you? Has he sent you to put me out of my misery? No. I'm going to get you out of here. Let me help you. There's no point. I'm burning with fever, and I'm already short of breath. Death lurks around every corner in this prison. I, I couldn't escape it. I... I'm not long for this world. No, you can't. Outside, your automats are slaughtering men, women, and children. What you have done, monsieur, only you can undo. What I have done? The miracles I performed, the wonders I gave to this kingdom, it was nothing but vanity. I closed my eyes to it for so long. Mesmer, Cagliostro. Souls snatched from their eternal rest like water from a well. I should have set fire to the workshop. I should have melted my creations. <laughs> it's not too late to stop the massacre. I don't have the strength. You must... <coughs> Speak, monsieur. Say something, awful. You must stop them. The king and his loathsome henchman, Cagliostro, the master of the machines. He gives them their orders. He must be silenced at all costs. <coughs> Take my hand. Monsieur. Monsieur. Father. No, no, my pauvre enfant. I am not your father. No more than you are, Atenais. You're but the vessel that contains what is left of her broken soul. <laughs> Ludia, I don't want to die without hope. In the name of what is left of her in you. In the name of her love for you. I beg you to free her from the purgatory our enemies have confined her to. I will grant your wish, monsieur. Do you realize what that means? Are you ready to make that sacrifice? The ultimate sacrifice. <laughs> I shall never see her darling face again. Much petite. You must set her free. Bring her back into the light. The light. The... Monsieur. Monsieur. No! Papa! Have you lost your mind? Bon son, my daughter, will you never listen? This machine belongs to the king now, vous le savez. There's nothing I can do about it. Did he also order you to torture her? The king wants me to make some improvements. And you obey him just like that? That's enough, Atenais. Let me work. And from now on, I forbid you from coming in here without my permission. Ugh! You're no better than your master, Papa! Citoyen, 
I come bearing sad tidings. Monsieur de Vaucanson has passed away. I was present for his last breath in his cell at the Bastille. Just de ciel. Requiescat in pace. Was he at least able to tell you something before he passed away? No. Nothing. How unfortunate. We are lost. Must we resign ourselves to this disastrous turn of events? No, General. Every part of me refuses to do so. Eugène de Vaucanson made me make a promise that I swore to keep. Now I have no other choice than to risk everything. What are you thinking, Aegis? I'm thinking of making my way to Versailles. Eh bien, you should know that I also plan to go there. You... don't even think about it. Ma foi. What have we got to lose? Our lives? At this point, you must admit that they're not worth much. I agree with the Marquis' resolution. We must take into account everything that Aegis has done to foil the King's plans. The time has come for us to put ourselves at her service. Not so fast, mon ami. Let's not rush into anything. You'd have to be mad to want to be part of the battle to come. Those who agree to take part in this strike will need to keep a low profile until Aegis has cleared the way. As for you, madame, I do not know what new arrangements have been made since my last visit to the Queen, but I found the area around the North Wing to be particularly empty. Here is where you should launch the attack. If fortune is in my favor, I shall be waiting for you at the Petit Trianon with something to help you make your way through the gardens. As for us, once the Automats have been defeated, we will enter the palace to seize the King and the Count. Is that your plan, Monsieur le Marquis? It is, Monsieur. We are about to take the small step that separates audacity from madness. Are you ready to take it, Madame? Citoyen, I cannot escape my obligations. It is in my very nature to honor them. I kept the promise I made to the Queen to find Monsieur de Vaucanson. I am now bound by the oath I swore before my Creator. If I go to Versailles, it is in the hope of rescuing Athenaeus. I think also of all that remains to be done in Paris. And what's more, you demand my help to make you masters of the King. It is a heavy burden that we place on your shoulders. But once again, we must leave it up to you. Take your time, Aegis. A hasty decision could lead to disaster. We will be ready for action when the time comes. Pour la nation, et pour le royaume! General Lafayette. Do you need help, Aegis? General, there is an alarming rumor about you going around. Huh. Just one, is there? You are accused of having delivered the troops who had gathered in the Place Dauphine over to the King. Calumny. This is nothing less than vile slander. I am the staunchest opponent of the bloodthirsty tyrant who claims to rule us. What's more, I did not call for the uprising. The National Guard came together on their own. This was the work of soldiers who rebelled and called on the people to rise up and defend Paris. It was only after they had gathered that the troops asked me to lead them. Alas, I was too late. But tell me, where did you hear this rumor? From Marat. Marat. It's always Marat. Nothing can stop that swinish mudslinger from slandering the most upstanding subjects in the kingdom. Ah, if I'd gone hold of him, I would have ensured he loses taste for gossip, believe you me. Me? Throwing the people to the wolves? What a foul accusation. I see the Duke d'Orléans hand in this. A prince without a kingdom but a master in the art of treachery. From exile, the wretch will stop at nothing to bring down the dynasty. He would go so far as to do away with the queen and her children, but I don't intend to let it happen. The day is fast approaching when I will make him pay. I was able to speak with Citoyen Marat and Citoyen Leclerc. Ah, the scoundrels. Did you force them to confess? Do you know what they did with the children? They admitted to organizing the ambush at Gros Caillou. Ah, cursed recreants. Cowardly corruptors of innocence. Where are they holding their prisoners? They must be rescued immediately. They do not have Charlotte and the Dauphin. Excuse me? They dare to claim that? It is the truth. 
The ambush was a catastrophe. The king had gotten wind of your plans. Automats from Versailles slaughtered the kidnappers and seized the children. By now, the children will have been reunited with their father. There is little doubt about that. Mon Dieu. Then it is from the clutches of that tyrant, in his own palace, that they must be saved. I fear that such an undertaking is doomed to failure, although there is no question of giving up. General Lafayette. Do you need help, Aegis? You lied to me, General. Now I know all about your machinations. And what could you possibly think you know? I know that you raised the National Guard for the sole purpose of taking command of it. There was nothing spontaneous about the uprising. Do you have any evidence to support your accusations? I do. I have the manifesto. Bon sang. Why resort to this manipulation? You must understand what I have done. I did for the good of the kingdom. I wanted to stop this massacre while protecting the Queen and the Dauphin. In the name of the people, Aegis. But an actual uprising of the people would have inevitably led to disaster. Only professional soldiers could organize and lead the resistance. Who were your accomplices? My brothers in arms. The brave men of the Regiment de Saint-Ange. Veterans of the American War. Men who, at the Battle of Yorktown, brought an empire to its knees. Alas, we gravely underestimated the enemy's forces. We thought we would face an infantry supported by a handful of machines, but an entire army of automats. It was unthinkable. Some accuse you of harboring a lust for power. The circumstances were to your advantage. These aspersions are all too familiar to me. But tell me, if I wanted the crown for myself, why did I not take it when I returned from America? When I had seasoned troops at my command and the people sang my praises with one voice? No, that makes no sense. Though I readily admit that I do believe I am worthy of fulfilling an important role for the queen after her son is crowned. Lieutenant General of the Kingdom, for example. Or even, if circumstance requires, the Regent. Voila. Now you know everything. I haven't left anything out. However, this truth, if it were made public, would play right into my enemy's hands. So I ask you not to reveal anything I've just told you, and to give me the manifesto. No, General. You'll forgive me for choosing to hold on to it. In that case, my fate remains in your hands. Can you at least tell me where my detractor is hiding? The one who is spreading these charming rumors about me. He comes and goes. One day he's here, one day he's there. It would be pointless to try to confront him. Oh, no matter. I will not let this serpent continue to vilify me. I shall get redress for these aspersions in the end. Do as you wish, General de Lafayette. Citoyen Marat. Madame? I'm surprised to find you here. Did you follow me? Didn't you know? The Duke's allies are always impeccably informed. Some even say that we have eyes and ears everywhere. What do you want from me? To tell you the truth, I can't wait to hear what you've discovered about the matter at hand. And I was afraid you might leave me in the lurch. You can never be too cautious these days. That's why I decided it would be better for me to come to you. You were right. Lafayette was behind this purportedly popular uprising. Aha! I've got him at last! But he had no intention of handing his men over to the king. His goal was to raise an army and command the troops himself. It doesn't matter. These troops would have allowed him to crush the patriots and set himself up as a dictator. He lied to the people. He lied to the Assemblée Nationale. His time has come. All I need is for you to give me the proof of his treason. I have no proof, monsieur. You will have to be satisfied with my word. Your word? What good is your word to me? Do you think I can convince people by repeating baseless accusations? Believe me, I have tried, but without much success. 
No, it's useless. I must admit defeat. We will have either the King or Lafayette, one despot or another. In either case, my fate is sealed. I will soon join the Duke in exile, and I will abandon my beloved people to their doom. I have no other choice. Citroën Mirabeau. What does this letter mean? Who gave you the right to read my correspondence? I'm curious about how you got rid of Italia. As if it burned your fingers. To tell you the truth, you're not entirely wrong. It is a missive sent by my father, the Marquis de Mirabeau. The scoundrel who shamelessly dares to call himself the friend of man. He writes to say that he is on the brink of death, in such a desperate state that he has received extreme unction. This reprobate used his final moments on this mortal plane to send me threats yet again. He swears that he will torment me from beyond the grave. How is that possible? To my knowledge, he has not yet deigned to shuffle off this mortal coil. In any case, the satisfaction of knowing he is dead would not assuage my concern. This man is more persistent than the plague. He is capable of anything. He has spent his entire life persecuting his family. And I believe he is ready to spend his eternal rest continuing to do the same. I need to know what he is planning. Where is he now? At his home in Argenteuil. Given the circumstances, going to ask him for an explanation is out of the question. But the man who heard his final confession is here. Monsignor de la Far. Precisely. Only this confounded shaveling refuses to tell me a word of what the old dragon confided to him. He stubbornly insists on the secrecy of confession. Bon sang. Will we ever be rid of these damned superstitions? <sighs> Ages. Would you be so kind as to intercede with the bishop? Perhaps you will be able to make him change his mind. Citoyen Robespierre. Madame. Are you making any progress with your projects? No, madame. At this time, we have not yet found a solution to the problem posed by these lanterns. If only Monsieur Lavoisier were with us, he would surely be able to solve this conundrum. Were you present when the Estates General was dissolved? Oui, madame. I had a front row seat. I witnessed what it cost to defy the crown. We laid bare before the king the abject misery of his subjects. It was more than he could suffer. So he had the people's representatives dispersed by means of bayonets. At least we only had to contend with soldiers made of flesh and blood, positively angelic compared to the machines that have swept through Paris. Goodbye, Citoyen Robespierre. And death to the tyrant. Citoyen Raymond. Can I help you, Aegis? Goodbye, Citoyen Raymond. And may liberty triumph. Monseigneur. What can I do for you, Aegis? Monseigneur. I would like to talk to you about your recent meeting with the Marquis de Mirabeau. What has gotten into all of you? This has gone on long enough. I will say it one last time and pray that they will finally leave me alone. Nothing and no one will make me violate the secrecy of his confession. Have I made myself clear? Perfectly clear, Monseigneur. Can I help you, Aegis? I hope so, Abbot. Our salvation is at stake. I am listening. Goodbye, Abbot. And may liberty triumph. Citoyen Mirabeau. Alas, the bishop stubbornly refused to reveal anything. Damn it. I need to know what my rogue of a father is up to. Let me think. In light of the cartload of threats he sent me, it's safe to wager that my sister and mother received similar letters. They may even have already suffered his revenge. However, my sister lives in Gas in the south of France. Unless a messenger rode a hundred horses to death, she could not have received this letter. Then there is my poor mother. If you ask me, I will go to find her. Yes, yes, it's very kind of you to offer. But I couldn't even tell you where she is staying. Your own mother? Indeed. It's a very embarrassing matter. A secret, which I beg you not to divulge. I can be discreet. 
Rest assured. Very well. You should know that my mother, the Countess of Covey, has lost everything. Truly. First her fortune, then her faculties. No matter what I tried, nothing could prevent her decline. It is said that she is now living on charity, in the most abject poverty in the slums of the Marais. If perchance your past takes you to this dreadful place, and if she still remembers who she is, perhaps you may meet her. Citoyen Mirabeau. Unfortunately, I come bearing sad news. Go on, Aegis. There is no need to spare me. This is about my mother, isn't it? Indeed. The Countess is no longer of this world. Yes, yes. It was to be feared. I knew she was lost a long time ago. The poor woman. At last she has been delivered from the madness that drove her into the gutter. It gets worse. Worse, you say? Your mother did not die of poverty. She was killed. Murdered? No. No! My father. The rabid dog made good on his threat. May he roast in the fires of hell for all eternity. As for you, Bishop, do you finally understand the man's true nature? How much longer will you protect this demon? I share your grief, Monsieur de Mirabeau, but the secrets of- Enough! You sanctimonious bigot! Is it not enough for you to serve the people absurd fables that condemn them to ignorance? Must you also submit to the whims of a malicious old brute? The scourge of his own family? Speak! Speak now, or so help me I will send you to meet your maker! Please, monsieur, let us not get carried away. Out, out, of, out of respect for your grief, and given the extraordinary circumstances, I consent to enlighten you. I am listening, Monseigneur. I admit that your father is an unusual person, inhabited by an anger whose source is undetermined. He blamed you, you, your sister, and your poor mother for all of his misfortunes. I stayed by his bedside an entire night. I preached about mercy and the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ha! <laughs> that must have gone over well. Do not mock me, Monsieur de Mirabeau. At dawn, I finally got Monsieur le Marquis to see the error of his ways. Before God, he extended forgiveness to all those he had previously condemned. However, he did not give up his plans for revenge. The fate reserved for my mother is proof of this. In fact, Monsieur, he did. He even gave me a leather wallet containing, in his words, the instrument of your punishment. He asked me to dispose of it. Unfortunately, your mother's fate was already sealed. Orders had been given. There was nothing more that could be done. The poor soul. He was in tears, his body racked with sobs. <laughs> My heart breaks to hear it. What was in the wallet? I don't know, monsieur. I did not open it. In that case, I ask you to give it to me now. I cannot, monsieur. When I was captured, the wallet fell into the hands of the Comte de Caliostro. Non de non, Aegis. Do you realize what this means? This wallet contains my father's sentences for his children. Me, of course, but also my sister, the Marquise de Cabri. You must find it at all costs. Our fate is in your hands. Caliostro must have put it in a safe place, somewhere known only to him. The Marquise de Cabri, dites-vous? Yes, that is my sister Louise's title. Fortune favors you today. It so happens that I already have this wallet. It was in a secret workshop by the Tuileries, where the Count conducts his sinister experiments. Oh, how fortunate. What does it contain? Two envelopes addressed to the Lieutenant General de Police. One of them had this letter in it. It concerns your sister, the Marquise de Cabri. Let's see. A letter de cachet signed by my father. He gave orders to have my sister locked up in a convent. His unique variety of fatherly love is unmistakable. What was in the second envelope? It is empty. Empty? Mon dieu. You don't have to be a genius to guess that it contained a similar document. This time concerning myself. 
If the envelope was empty, it means that this letter has already been delivered to its recipient. By Cagliostro, no doubt. The monster must have felt a perverse sense of joy as he devoured its contents. Aegis, you must retrieve this letter at all costs. If the Lieutenant General attaches a seal and gives it to his underlings at the Châtelet, I am done for. Where does this Lieutenant General reside? Oh, right by the fortress. He's a dutiful man and prides himself on never straying too far from it. Please hurry, I beg of you. Sit where Mirabeau. Here is the letter sent by your father to the Lieutenant General de Police. You were right. Oh. <laughs> Mon Dieu. So this is what the cur had in store for me. A new lettre de cachet with the royal seal. He sentenced me to spend the rest of my days in the Chateau de Vincennes. To return to the cell where he had me locked up twelve years ago. Those ten square feet where I lay at death's door for forty-two months on end. Fourteen seasons spent with chattering teeth, coughing up a bucket full of bile and blood every day. Your own father had you thrown in jail? Alas, such is the sad truth. What crime did he hold you to be guilty of? He disapproved of the follies of the young man I was back then, and my love for a certain someone. A woman whom an unjust law kept me apart from. I was free and besotted with happiness, Aegis. And that was a crime in the eyes of my father, the Marquis. I sullied the Mirabeau name, so he felt it necessary to steal my youth and clap his wayward son in irons. What does this letter matter in the face of the mortal peril that hangs over all the King's enemies? You must put yourself in my shoes to understand. If the King wins this war, he will send all the brave men here to the scaffold, and I am certain they will climb the steps with their heads held high. But if you hadn't taken that letter, I would have suffered a far darker fate. Louis the Mad would have made it his duty to respect my father's last wishes, but I would rather die, whether a hero or a coward, than return to Vincennes. There is no worse hell on earth than that infernal dungeon. Was there no trial? One would imagine. Those damned lettres de cachet. For centuries, a powerful man, whether a king or a father, needs simply put pen to paper, and an innocent man is thrown into prison. The poor soul sees neither judge nor lawyer. In the space of an hour, he moves from the light into darkness, and his cries for help fall futilely on the cold stone of the dungeon walls. I am just one of many victims, whose ranks range from the most famous to the most lowly, from Voltaire and Diderot to the unfortunate children whose dark fates will never be known. In any case, I must now express my eternal gratitude, even though no words, no matter how eloquent, can express its depth. I owe everything to you, Aegis. You, who've broken my chains forever. Whatever happens now, I will be free to live or die for the nation. As for the Marquis de Mirabeau, that criminal whom misfortune chose as my father, let us consider him dead, shall we? Let him choke on loneliness and regret once and for all. You called, madame? Aegis, thank heavens you're here. We're under siege. In the courtyard, one of the king's creatures. It seems determined to destroy the chateau walls. It's as if it came here for us. Here is the key to the gate. It will lead you to the courtyard. Hurry, our lives are in your hands.
Tulisa, that thing, it's staring at you. You're safe, madame. Mon dieu. Ages. Why did this abomination attack us? I think you know, madame. You saw how it obeyed you when you ordered it to stop fighting. I don't understand a word of this nonsense. I'm afraid your guardian angel seems to have a few screws loose, my queen. No. You must listen to me. That creature was not trying to destroy you, madame. It was trying to be near you. Listen to your heart. You know what it was. You know whose soul animated those cogs. Stop it, please. Just stop. You must know the truth. Everything is there, written in the King's own hand. How he ordered your son to be put to death. How he bound his soul to the machine I just destroyed. How they were unable to control this hateful thing. My baby. Oh, my queen. My poor angel. In the hell he suffered. Wanted only to seek his mother's comfort. No. No. Curse you, Louis. The Butcher King. Murderer. Destroyer of innocence. He will pay for this unspeakable crime with his own head. I swear it on my life. No, Antonia, my dear friend. Do not give in to this madness. Leave us, Aegis. I must speak privately with Madame de Polignac. Very well, Madame. Oh, you've come back to us. Oh, my child. My sweet child. It's all right, my queen. He stopped shouting. The doctors are with him. <gasps> when will they let me hold him? Don't worry. I'm sure that... <gasps> oh, look! He's moving! My son! Oh, my son! Grâce à Dieu! We've done it! He's alive, Gabrielle! Yes, my queen, he has been saved! Praise be to the good Dr. Le Monnier! Grand Dieu! What's going on, Gabrielle? Dear, stand back, Your Majesty! Silence, everyone! Hear my voice! My child! Seigneur! Oh, mon Dieu! What on earth? Your Majesty, we must retreat! Leave this here! Go! Oh, my Queen! Oh, no! Hurry up and close that door! The grass! Let me see him! No, madame! It is over! You must go to Versailles! No! My son! My darling angel! <laughs> Our plan is foolproof. Monsieur Cléry will be waiting for you at Gros Caillou at the appointed time. But I warn you, do not be late. Don't worry, monsieur. I will not fail you. Very well. As for the rest, everything is explained in this letter. Mesdames, the die is cast. In a week, God willing, you will be in Vienna, and the children under the Emperor's protection. Quiet, someone is coming. Monsieur, you must leave. Your Grace. Monsieur, to what do we owe this honor? Madame, we are in grave danger. In Paris, the people are up in arms. I've been informed that the rebels are marching on the palace. What do you mean? There is no need to be alarmed. You are to be taken to saint Cloud and placed under competent protection. Have your people prepare your things. You will leave Versailles in an hour. Good heavens, my queen. How will I get
get to the children. Oh, mon dieu. All is lost. Bon sang. Aegis, here you are at last. You've come at just the right time. Madame, go and find the children. We must get going. No, monsieur. Let's wait a little longer, please. The children here? At the Petit Trianon? Yes. They are upstairs in the Queen's room. General, you and I both know what is coming. You must take them to safety post-haste. No, it's out of the question. I will not leave without Her Majesty. What happened to the Queen? Something curious is going on here. The Ujamats will not come within a hundred paces. The King's orders, no doubt. He wants to protect his children from his own automats. Sadly, the Queen... What you told her about the death of her son has troubled her mind. She rushed to the palace despite the danger. She intends to see the King and make him pay for what he has done. There was nothing we could do. We could not dissuade her. Run and get the children. They must not remain at Versailles any longer. Have no fear, madame. I will take you to a place where all three of you will be safe. I will help Her Majesty. Dieu vous vient mon aide. I place my last hope in you. Don't delay, Aegis. Our companions are ready to take the palace as soon as you have destroyed its protectors. I will join you when I have completed my task. The key, Atanaeus. The key! But I gave it to you earlier! Please, it's no matter. Once again, we were treated to a charming show. Oh, it was much more than that, Monsieur de Vaucanson. This automat is a masterpiece. A mechanical marvel. It could do much more than dance, ne croyez-vous pas? Madame. The Estates General brandish the threat of rebellion. There is plotting afoot. They are stirring up the populace. Worse, they are making pacts. A number of representatives of the nobility and the clergy have taken up the cause of the Third Estate. As for my army, there is not a man among them I can trust. That is why I have made new arrangements for you. From now on, the Swiss Guard will no longer be protecting you. Then who will, my love? Take a look for yourself. And be assured you are in sturdier hands. Uh, what... Uh, whatever do you mean? Isn't that... Lutia? Monsieur Vaucanson's dancing doll? Appearances can be deceiving, madame. The Count has made extraordinary improvements to this automat. Aegis, this is Her Majesty the Queen. You are now to serve her. Make sure no harm comes to her, and obey the orders she will give you. Madame, I am at your service. Patrolissa? He can speak. This makes no sense. This is sorcery. Make no mistake, Madame. It is science which we owe to the work of the Count. And which will soon be made known to the entire world.
You struggle in vain, dancer. You're not long for this world. How the Aegis turns against its master. You are not my master, tyrant. You never were. I am quite happy to concede this point, but what about the Count? Have you forgotten that he gave you life and whispered the order that animates you? Look how he runs, the coward! Do you understand what he has in mind? La pauvre enfant, sleeping so sweetly, she won't be dreaming for long now! Poisson! Adonais! Don't move! The time has come to set you free, Aegis. This whore's soul has poisoned your cogs for too long. Adieu, sad puppet. No! Bounty Devine, I don't want to die. Adonais, the sun is rising, and you have slept for far too long. The beauty of this world longs for you, just as you long for its light. For you are like the flowers that open in the morning. I know you, mon ami. We loved each other. Vous en souviens-t-il? You gave me your heart. So please, let me give you mine today. Vive heureuse, Atenaeus. For it is happily that I leave this world. This way, monsieur. Monsieur, we have the king. It is now up to us to wield his scepter. In this trying time, crucial decisions must be made without delay. First and foremost, we must take back Paris. And how do we do that, mon dieu? There are automats everywhere, and they are regenerated by their crimes. We have the king. Cagliostro has fled, but he is leaving a trail of blood. I doubt he will survive his injuries. As a result, the automats are left to their own devices, with no one to give them orders and no reinforcements. And since I'm sure the Parisians will no longer venture out into the streets, the machines will soon have no more souls to harvest. Sooner or later, they will no longer be able to move, and par la grâce de Dieu, will become inanimate objects again. It's a matter of days, weeks at most. Mais ensuite, this has been restored. What of the kingdom? This is indeed a crucial issue. Leaving the nation without a government would expose it to the greatest danger. Worse, 
It would condemn it to civil war. Eh bien quoi, monsieur? Can you not govern together? Unfortunately, the disagreements that divide our assembly run far too deep. That which we can agree is that we have been given a chance to choose the person who shall succeed the tyrant. I claim this honor. Excuse me? For what reason, je vous prie? Enfin, simply consider the arguments for it. Speak, Monsieur le Marquis. You have our full attention. To begin with, I rescued the Dauphin from his father's clutches and ensured the dynasty's stability. The child will reign as Henri V. We will appoint someone with great wisdom to act as regent until he comes of age. Fie. The people do not need a crowned puppet. Yes, they do. Now more than ever before. Once the Assembly has adopted a constitution, the people will welcome a sovereign who will protect it. A king and a constitution, like oil and water. Go on, Monsieur le Marquis. I have the gunpowder that the king had seized. With it, I shall ensure the security of the kingdom within and beyond its borders. How can we be sure that you will not use it to oppress the people, or to embark on some foolhardy conquest? We know your ambitions, Monsieur le Marquis. And you wrongly accuse me. I have never, in my entire life, done anything that was not to further the cause of freedom. Do you forget that in America I helped overthrow the English? Of course not, mon ami. Who could forget that ruinous adventure? You are quick to condemn men of action, provincial lawyer that you are. Monsieur, I rest my case. Very well. Monsieur, we must now make our decision. May each of us respect this decision and set aside our personal interests for the sake of peace and the common good. Who among you approves the appointment of the Marquis de Lafayette? The court bows before the Marquis de Lafayette, Lieutenant General du Royaume. Louis de Bourbon, former King of France, in the name of King Henri, fifth of his name, in light of the innumerable crimes of which you have been found guilty, this extraordinary royal court sentences you to the ultimate atonement. The sentence will be carried out on the hour in its great mercy, the court will now hear your last words. My loyal subjects, since you must lead a lamb to the altar, since you must offer a sacrifice to this new France that you intend to found, I will be that sacrifice. How dreadful this world is, where beauty is doomed to fade and flesh decays. I found no consolation in this world. I vainly thought I was giving our souls the gift of immortality beyond our mortal bodies. The Grim Reaper was my sworn enemy. Influenced by the most awful of men, I believed that the genius of machinery could overcome death itself. Alas, I have lost this fight, and am branded with a mark of murderer. Life, even more than the crown, was heavy for me to bear. I have suffered too long under the thumb of nature, which I despised. As a child, I saw my older brother die. I lost my father in the prime of his life, and then my mother, who was even younger. My beloved daughter did not live a year. As for my son, the first of my heirs, I unknowingly gave him to drink from a poisoned cup. I mourn the death of these poor souls daily. My death will not unite us, of this I am certain. For I, in my misery, 
I've lost the support of my faith. So, Executioner, lay me down on this board, Vatu. I will sleep now. Sleep at last, and not to dream.